when you're doing something for the first time, it's so incredibly tough to see the bigger picture, to see the whole scope, to see what it could be. If you don't know what this is, Talking Tough episodes on Thursdays, I shoot the shit, I say my mind, I say what's happening in my life because I know it's purposeful for somebody to vent, to have a therapy session with themselves and to listen in, watch in, whatever. This is what it is, therapy. Anyways, when you have an opportunity that you prayed for, that you've been working towards, whether it's a promotion at your job, whether it's an event that you want to put on, a new version of you that you want to step into. I always talk about the journey and the journey within the journey of life, which is the climb, the journey within the journey, the journey within the climb, whenever you're stepping and you put that big look, left foot, the big ass toe, I might put my foot in the camera. That's gross. Whenever you step to another level, there's the weight of getting to that next step that tries to bring you back. And that weight, it doesn't even want to get you to where you are. That weight wants to pull you down further. And when that weight pulls you down further, you begin to spiral because you listen to that voice that says you're not good enough, that says you're trying too hard. For myself, I, it's like I'm teaching. I said this talking tough where I just shoot the shit, but I had that in mind because I have an opportunity with Texas Tech and I went to them. I flew in earlier in the month. And long story short, I have an opportunity to do a six podcast series starting in September at the tailgates to where I do a live podcast at a tailgate, at a Texas Tech tailgate. Like, that's huge. Like, it's something that when I look back in my notes and just in my times of real introspection and what I want, I'm like, damn, I've been thinking about a partnership or something with my university for since April, since I met a man in my gym, Lifetime Fitness, and he stopped me and he felt so called because I was previously on a podcast talking about how I was on a coaching committee, the Texas Tech Coaching Committee, to find our next coach. Basically, it was me, the AD of our school, athletic directors, for those that don't know, is like the president of athletics. Number three, a donor that provides the money to fund the athletics and our head football coach. So Norrance, head football coach. I only have one finger up. Norrance, head football coach, AD, president. Who doesn't fit? And from that time to where I am now, that gentleman, he saw me in the gym and he stopped and he said, I felt so called to tell you that basically one tech needs some buzz. And I agree. And I had a lot of things to say in our meeting, but two, you should be doing something with tech. And I'm like, I've been thinking about something to do with tech. I want to be a voice for the student athletes that people don't actually know the real stories that they go through, their background stories. When they get to Texas Tech, it's like a weight, the pressure. Obviously, we won there, but give them a chance to be themselves and to find it out themselves. But the weight of what college sports is right now, I don't have my family there with me. I'm growing. There's so many things as a young man. That's when you become a man. And so I want to be a liaison and be in there for that student athlete to teach them the way to kind of be there like, bro, I was in your shoes. I know what it's like to get up and go to workouts and run my little sweaty ass across the big ass campus. Like Texas Tech is like the biggest campus other than the Air Force in terms of land area in the country. So I know what it's like to you got to be first in class. That's how my mentality was. And that's how it was for every class. You got to be first to class. But after a long workout where they ass was trying to make us throw up to where my big blubbery butt while I was a freshman, I'm running line. I'm like, God damn. But I know I got to get two miles yonder in about 10 minutes. How the hell am I going to do that? Well, Norris, they got buses, but if you get your bag, run upstairs, you already tired, and then you see the little bus, the city bus going, you got to flag the dude down like, hey, my boy, I play on the team. And he's like, I don't know you yet. You got to go through that. And then you got to get to MassCom building where it's freaking 10 million stories high. And you, oh, today the elevator is not working again. So you got to get on the stairs and run, run, run. You finally make it because there, I always is like this. Like I need, 
I hate being late. So I got to be there. If I'm one minute late, it pisses me off. That's how I was in my class. So I get there right on time after everything I've been through, after what I got through this morning and I get there and now I'm in the front of the class and I'm, <sighs> I'm huffing and puffing. I'm huffing and puffing. So let's set the stage. Let's say it's a 50 minute class. I'm huffing and puffing and I'm setting the wind in. That's 10 minutes gone for the class where I'm like trying to, you know, get into it. Then let's say the next 10 minutes I'm spent on, damn, well, shit, I got to use the restroom because I did a long workout and I ain't talking about just pissing. I got to, eh. we just, we just ran lines. So I almost threw up and I just had to get my bearings together to get here. So I'm like, damn, I'm wrestling within for the next 10 minutes <laughs> to see like, bro. Uh, I'm negotiating. Should I go to the restroom in the middle of this lecture when I'm in the front of the class? Like, my big ass, like, bro, I'll be noticed. Anyways, I spend that 10 minutes, then I'm like, damn, I got to go before I spew everywhere. So I get my blood up, and I go to the first restroom. When I peer in, I whip the door open, I get a whiff, I whip the door shut. Because that whole stink. Because people like to shit in public even though that's what I was going there to do as well. Anyways, and so I spend the next couple minutes to find a good restroom, and then I get the little toilet paper, and I plot it just right, and I squat. So why did I put down paper just to not put my ass down there? And now my legs are shaking because I just ran lines, and then after all that, wash my hands, jet to class, that was about 15 minutes. So let's do the math. 10 just huffing and puffing, sweating, and getting my bearings together. Ten, just negotiating it with myself. Damn, should I go? Uh, I don't want to make a mess in class. And then, then I end up going, mm, 15, finding a smelly bathroom, and then running to the other side to finally uh, lava, and then rest in the squatting position while I'm shaking like a damn stripper. That's 35 minutes, Norrence. And now you spent five minutes in class thinking about how you weren't in class. So that's 40 minutes. Now you got 10 minutes left in this lecture hall and you're trying to, oh, damn, she got a PowerPoint up? All right, let me record everything that she talking about real quick. And then I give a little glance over to the left. I see the little, the little, the little lady to my left. She, one that has a whole, one of those people that has a whole Word document of, oh, like all crafted nicely. And she slammed her laptop shut as soon as she see me Looking to the left, I wanted to smack her ass. Anyways, I got 10 minutes to do my whole class. Long story short, I say that to say I want to speak for that athlete, speak to that athlete, because I know what that's like to perform in the classroom, to perform on the court, to perform in the media and with the community and to perform in your life as a man. I want to speak to that. But I want to speak to the fan who shows up every single game for this team, in this town. This is our Super Bowl. This is our main thing. This is why we care. The grit, the fight, the toughness, the togetherness. This is how we showcase and tell the world who we are. We're counted out on the national media scale. Why? We're great. And what we're building together, we're close-knit. All these teams, all these schools, they don't give a damn about their alumni. They don't care about their school. We actually freaking care. There's a lot of emotion in the fan base at Texas Tech. I care about that. I care about what they care about. I care about stewarding that opportunity and, and leading that voice, that charge, because it's like, if we say we're Texas Tech and we're fearless champions, I said this in the meeting, and I, I'm, for me, I don't sugarcoat shit I say, because this is how I, this is my ilk. I'm cut like this, period. And it's not, whoa, it's me. God gave me this to say. And I have the credibility with the Lord and the relationship to say it. Anyways. I said, if we say we're fearless champions, um, fearless to me is leadership. How can we say we're fearless champions when we're not leading in the way we communicate who we are? Like, are we amplifying different voices and telling them who we are, telling our story, telling the athlete's story, telling the journey? I think, and I know, vulnerability is connection. When people see you open the door to your life and say, this is how I am. This is what I went through. This is where I come from. This is what my family need, means to me. This is what winning means to me. This is why I chose this school. This is what I go through on a daily. If I showcase that, if we have a platform, a storytelling platform to showcase the athlete story, to showcase not only the athlete story, because I personally, I'm just talking about me, I personally don't only give a damn about the athlete. I personally don't only give a damn about the fans. I personally give a damn about Everything that makes it run, the behind the scenes people that are never highlighted, 
the great storytellers, the great vision, the people that are doing so many things, wearing so many hats, because I can attest to that now, a podcast. Oh my goodness, pre and post production of a podcast. Just that is a lot. You got to write, you got to study, you got to edit, you got to chop it up, you got to study trends, you got to get on top of the trends, you got to do this and do that. They're doing that at a large scale at a Texas Tech and even more. And obviously at a university underpaid and they're so talented, how can we tell their story of why they take this position when they're underpaid? Obviously the experience of why they got into showcasing and telling the stories because without them, shit, y'all would see a goddamn manila paper with nobody saying nothing. You wouldn't see the story. You get the point. How do I tell a cheerleader story? I don't want to say cheerleader story because I don't like, <laughs> what's the specific word? Boss babe, got down. That's what I think of it. How do I show that story? The Palm Squad, how do I show that story? Because they have real ties to what they're doing. They have real stories to what they're doing. They have a real backing and real somebody that they look to for why they show up, not only as an athlete at Tech, but as a student at Tech. I want to showcase and be the one to show that because I care. And I always ask myself, why do I care so much? I grew up there. I believe I grew up there. Because it sounds bad, but North Crowley, I don't talk much about my high school. I care because I grew up there, but like it was something about I lost family at Texas Tech. I grew up as a man at Texas Tech. I saw how people picked me up at Texas Tech. I care about that whole community. So I said all that to say I go on a rant. I'm really passionate about, one, servicing people, building people up, showing them that they can do the things that they think they can't do inspiring them to do the things that inspire them to go out on a whim and say, uh, you know, I'll be damned, but shit, I, I believe in me. <laughs> I believe in me. Why not? Why can't I see and do the things that I, mm, I kind of am afraid to do, but shit, I believe in me. And it's not even about how I feel in this moment. I believe in who I am really. And I don't care what my mind belief says that says, shit, who are you to do the things that you haven't seen you do before? But uh, hello, if I'm breathing, and I'm living in this moment right now today. I've never seen me breathe in this moment right now today ever. <laughs> so the fact that I'm here is a miracle and I'll continue to be here and here and here and go there and there and there. That's life. And just like how I'm living my life is how I live my life by faith about the things that I can not see. <sighs> it's tough because it's tough when you get to a point where you prayed for something, and I fast forward it to this moment. For the podcast, that's a great opportunity to be in front of people that I care about, where I care about. It's like the pressure of the things you prayed for. And that's, it, it gets painful because you know why you care so much that you don't want this to be done in some eh, way. You want to try all that you can Get your ducks in a row. I met with somebody today, Allison. Thank you so much. You know who you are. If you're listening to this, you help me a ton with strategy on how to go forward and what to ask and how to push and how to go open my eyes in ways that I couldn't even get there myself. And that's it. That's partly it, though. Now I'm thinking, I'm like, bro, that's God. Shut the hell up, Norris. It's okay to not know because nobody before they did knew everything. And if they did, you wouldn't need faith. And that's the way you're supposed to live. That's the way you're supposed to breathe. That's the way you're supposed to move. All faith. Because you're the just. <laughs> Justified by the man. <sighs> it's just hard, bro. And even on this podcast, I know this is talking tough, so I can just shoot the shit. But obviously, every time I want to just leave a treat and I just pray and say, God, let it come through me. Use me. But it's hard where you know you can do so much more if you're watching, if you're listening, that you can do so much more and you want so much more for yourself and you're pushing for something greater and you know and you've been around people that has done great things so you know I can do great things I don't have the expertise to know exactly what it takes to do great things but I'm putting myself out there and I'm asking I'm trying and I'm listening and I'm learning and I'm pushing and I'm exerting all my energy to do great things but I don't know how to do the great thing that I need to do when I need to do it I need it to be done but I don't know how when you get overwhelmed it's so hard to see the bigger picture it's so hard to 
to survive and to serve at the same time. But we don't actually realize that service is survival. It's thriving. It's not just surviving. It's thriving. It's living. It's, it's life. When you care about other people, when you care and you're so connected to touching other people, not <clears throat> just coming up for air and breathing and living. No, because if that shit sucks, Norrance, <laughs> let's check the obituaries in the morning tomorrow. Your ass ain't going to be in there. You still going to be living. You still going to be breathing. You're not going to be in the obituary. You still got another day to live. So live. So live. I'm telling you, a lot of times when I talk, it helps me. And I think people, as my nose ring just comes out, I'm just going to leave it out because I'm not about to mess with it right now. I think a lot of people, well, I don't know. It's my mind really telling me. A lot of people think probably you're self-serving while you're saying, oh, I like when I speak and it helps me. No, it literally helps me. And when it helps me, it reminds me that it's not me speaking. Yes, it is me speaking. Let me stop. But I allow, I say, God, speak through me. So I'm, I'm so grateful I'm being used. But it's hard when you don't always feel it. And just like I got to get it revved up, I got to get the energy. I got to get the might. I got to get the fight for an episode. I got to get revved up for me to see it. And I'm like, oh, I have a better perspective kind of midway through the episode, how I'm going, how I'm flowing. Am I doing good? I always have like a mental check. You're on the right track or you sound like shit. So right or wrong. If you like this, please like the video, like this podcast rate right now. Anyways, I'm like, oh, this is going good or this sucks. Like it's a slow climb. And it's like that in life while we're ramping up, we're getting ready to take off. We're in the middle. And when you're taking off, that shit gets shaky. <laughs> That shit gets bumpy, gets rocky. And sometimes you like, land this plane right now, bro. I don't like the way you took off, my boy. Just land it right now, and let's try it again. Land it. It's too shaky right now. Right now, we all shaking, shaking, shaking. But why are you shaking? You better strap your ass up, because <laughs> the afflictions of the righteous are many. <laughs> and I'm one of them, the righteous. They're, trying times are going to come, period. God, my Lord, that's what I go off of. Never said, oh, shit, this shit going to be easy, my boy. Here you go. Because <laughs> you wouldn't need faith. I got to remember that. I got to really remember that. <sighs> and it gets tough. It gets tough. But I just, I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing of the word of God. And it don't matter who, and it doesn't say who you got to hear it from. You can hear it from your goddamn self. So that when I speak to myself, when I'm in those tough times and I wake up and I'm just anxious for no reason, I'm just <gasps> usually it's because I didn't sleep enough. I'm on the phone with friends like last night, which is good. I was talking to my boys, but like, I'm like, bro, I, guess I should go to bed because on Wednesdays, I like my off days from the gym. No physical strain. My body feels refreshed. I'm like, it just feels like I could do so much in my day or relaxing a me day because I'm so strenuous on go to the gym go to the coffee shop, build out, learn. And then when you're on an entrepreneurship journey, like I am building out this media company with Mind Bully, how do I go about the next steps? What makes it the best for you, the listener, you, the viewer? How do I make it a thing? How do I build the digital footprint that makes this a real thing that people say, okay, I want to be a part of that. I want to write my name on that. I say yes to that. How do I do all that? So I think about that every single day. So Wednesday, when I didn't get enough sleep, and I'm still thinking about that, oh, I get up, and I'm anxious, and I'm anxious. And if you're watching, if you're listening, if you get anxious, you get anxious, just breathe. I literally, after I spoke and I was with Allison in that coffee shop, it's like I prayed for this opportunity, and God gave me somebody with expertise and speaking exactly the language that uh, some of it I understood, but like I understand in theory, I'm like, oh shit, this person is way smarter than me. Yes, 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 this is what I needed. Thank God, a godsend. So when he checks off the opportunity, checks off people to give you counsel and consult you and help you and what you're doing, you should just end the day with three checks and have a great green day, right? Wrong. After that, I was sitting just overwhelmed, like, damn. I got a lot on my plate and I was literally shaking to the point where I literally, I'm not kidding, put my headphones in, nothing was in and I was just breathing all the way up. And I like belly breathing, like expands my ribs, makes them go wide and contract 
all the way up to seven. I would hold for three seconds, <gasps> down seven seconds. And like I did that up to 32 because my number is 32. And it, that takes a while. And I'm literally sitting there at Foxtrot Market in Oak, not Oakland, but freaking uptown Dallas. And I'm just sitting there. And while I'm sitting there, I'm like, Bruh, I got my phone out to the left. I got my camera to the right. I hope somebody don't jack my black ass while my eyes are closed because I'm kind of stay focused. I'm breathing because I'm overwhelmed. Life, bro. <sighs> but we got to know that we got to move forward. The opportunities, the ideas that we've been blessed to hold, to steward, to be in charge of. We got to move forward on every single thing that God has placed in us. We have to move forward because. I said this before, it's a god dang disgrace to hold that in. And, you know, part of me likes to be nice and, oh, empathize. Like, if I'm talking to a friend, empathize and then push their ass and eh, show empathy, then push their ass. Like, I'm yin and yang, but I know that nothing comes from coddling. Yes, you got to be, if you're speaking to a friend or speaking through somebody that went through a tough time, you have to understand that you're not them and you don't see the world they did and the way they do. And you don't know what they went through. So you got to be cognizant of that. But to know and to help that person get out of that, it's always going to take the work to get out of that. Now, the way that you do it and the steps and the progression and the pace can be different. But if you've been talking to this person for a while, if it's a friend, it's a family member, and they're going through the same cycle through life, the same relationships, and, oh, I'm hurt today and I'm sad and they're crying, it's the onus to know, hey, you know who you are. You know you're a gem, a diamond. Get the hell away from this ugly little dude. Because obviously, obviously, you're not seeing who you are. You're not seeing who you can be. You're not seeing who you could become. You're not seeing that person that you should be. You're not seeing what you truly deserve. You're not seeing what you truly need. You're not seeing you. So step your little ugly ass, get out your feelings not just of the moment he broke your heart, but the feelings of, I love him. Step out of your feelings so you can step into seeing you whenever you're talking to that friend. Tell him to hurry up and move forward. Because a lot of times you take that example, a relationship. Oh, God going to do it when he want to. If God going to move or God, God going to do it for me, he going to put me there. He going to shit. He prepared the way. Yo, stupid ass going to have to uh, a two-step. A two-step and walk, move, go, run if you want to. Go, go, go. It's like, what do they do? Like the Kentucky, not the Kentucky Derby. Oh, bull riders. When they charge forward, I just moved the camera. Charge forward, go, go. <laughs> if God wants to do it, he'll do it. No, he won't until you do something. What if before I got saved, I said, man, if God want to save me, he'll save me. Shit. Your ass gonna have to conf confess what Romans ten, what is it seven? You gotta confess it, hell, and you will be saved. But believe what he say. Call on Jesus, say his name. Just receive him in your heart, and you will be saved. You gotta say the verse. I think it's ten nine. You gotta say the word verse. Like you gotta do it. You gotta do something to move forward. Your faith has to be in action. It's not faith if it's stagnant. It's not faith if it's not moving forward. And you're going to have to get your big butt up, your big black ass up, and tiptoe, run through that hole. Whatever you want to do, fam. Famo, whatever you want to do to get it done, get it done. Being overwhelmed is a setback to you. It's a setback to who you need to be for what you want to do, for who you want to serve. Being overwhelmed, sticking in that, staying in that, shaking in that. Any of that is holding you back. So have your moment. I'm not saying you're not having, shit, I'm having a moment right now. Have your moment. Then snap out of that moment and get forward and look back on that moment and say, God dang, that was a moment, but I didn't leave and let that moment set me back and keep me there and keep me stagnant. I had a moment and I went for it. And I went for it. Because the funny thing about life is this. Anytime you look back, I guarantee you, I will bet you a $1,000. As I wrap this up, because I'm talking too much, anytime, if you're listening, if you're watching, anytime you look back on your life and the things that are in your heart or in your head that you're saying, I should have did this, I should have did that, it's usually 
oh, I should have had more courage. I should have had more courage and did that. I should have had more courage and came to school how I wanted to and talked how I wanted to and tried different teams and tried different sports how I wanted to. I should have did that. I should have not gave a damn what them little kids at high school or middle school cared about me. I should have showed up like me. I should have. It's always courage based. So right now, how can you acquire more? How can you acquire more courage right now? I don't give a damn if I'm babbling. It's courage to babble on camera, on the mic. It's courage because you don't have to show up as a perfect project because there's no perfect project. It's a project. But as a project is a project, that whole got to be moving forward. If I look in basketball and say, yeah, he's a project. What makes him a prospect? Ooh, that rhyme. What makes him actually something? It's the in-between stage, the tension stage, the stage where he hasn't met where he wants to get to. What does he need to acquire and garner and learn and run through through that stage? One, it's the faith. Two, it's learning how to move forward despite the setbacks that you have in your own head. And three, it's remembering the pace and to give yourself grace and to seek his face because this is a race. This is a race.